here's the five things that you need to do before you leave your dog with someone. Okay, so first off, a schedule. People don't know your dog like you do. You know what time they typically get up, how many times a day they poop, when they eat, how much they eat, all of that. Like, what is normal for your dog? What do they do at, you know, do they need something at 11? Or, you know, do they need a med at 8 p.m. before bed? Like, the people you're leaving your dog with don't know. So you have to tell them. Yeah, we were dog sitting for somebody a couple of years ago, and they simply just brought their dog over handed us a bunch of stuff and left. There were actually eardrops in the bag and we were given zero instruction on what to do with those eardrops. Are, are they just there in case the dog gets an earache? Or did the dog currently have an earache and we needed to administer it once or twice we, or three we times We had a no day? idea. Literally zero instructions. All we were told was like, give a cup and a half of food twice a day. That was it. Like we knew nothing else. Our friend Haley for Trigger, she was a superstar when it came to the schedule. She literally wrote out like, this is when he wakes up, this is when he eats, give this medicine at this time, and that medicine a couple hours later, and that he'll need to go out again at this point, take him on a walk at this time. Not necessarily saying you have to do it at these times, but she's like, this is what I do and this is what works for him. Bottom line, the most important thing you can give somebody when there's dog sitting for you is a schedule. Write everything out. Text it to him, email it to him, write it down on paper, let them know exactly what the schedule of the dog is and everything that goes on in the daily life of that dog. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I know, I got the box of goodies. Wrangler wants the box and Trigger wants Wrangler. All right, the second point to make is gonna be a little bit tough because the dogs are going absolutely nuts with what we have. Uh, but the second thing you should provide people with is food. In Trigger's case, this is what he eats. It doesn't matter, it's just what she brought over for us. Um, brought all of his treats, a whole entire box of just... Y'all, we got peanut butter, we've got little bites, we've got greenies, spray cheese, pill pockets. Yeah, everything you could possibly imagine. Provide this for the person who's watching oh your dog. So the dogs just went nuts and knocked over the camera. Had to do a little resetting there. I think the food uh, was a little bit much for him to have out. Uh, but our third point, the third thing that you should leave somebody uh, with if they're watching your dog is all the gear that is applicable to your dog. For Trigger, we have a few things. Uh, one is his Thunder shirt. Uh, he does have a little bit of anxiety, so the Thunder shirt is something that we can put on. Um, basically, it's just a way to calm a dog down or a tool to use to calm a dog down. Trigger does have a training collar as well that we can use that the owners do use on him. Anti-chew, this is so nice of her to include. Uh, don't assume that the person who's watching your dog has vinegar or has anti-chew. Uh, if your dog has a problem chewing on things, whether it's the sofa or cords or shoes, wherever it might be, try to provide this for somebody uh, if it's appropriate for your dog. It'll just help out so much. Bottom line is your dog has specific gear that you use daily and you may take it for granted and you might think that other people who have dogs that are watching your dogs also have this stuff but don't assume that. Just go ahead and provide the gear for them because this is so, so, so helpful. Okay, so number four is gonna be toys, especially in Trigger's case where he's very anxious. He's gonna need different types of toys to keep him occupied. Okay, so we've got, you know, the bone. We can put treats in here, a rope. Another rope. And there's a few others, but basically just a variety of stuff to keep him busy and try to keep him calm. Yeah, especially if your dog has their favorite toys and you know that, uh, go ahead, provide those for that person who's watching dog for you. So number five uh, is gonna be a little bit of a bonus and it's more of a courtesy to the person who's watching your dog rather than something you can provide for them. Uh, number five is simply bathing your dog before taking them over to be watched. It seems like a small thing, but nobody who's watching your dog or has volunteered or agreed to watch your dog wants to receive a stinky dog in their house. We've watched a dog where they dropped him off and like I immediately had to bathe the dog because she smelled so bad. Yeah, so those are five things that you should do uh, before having somebody watch your dog. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed the video, uh, consider giving it a thumbs up. Uh, and if you've watched a few of our videos already, consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. And we'll see you in the next adventure.